All right. It is, it is what time is it? 704. 705 or 704, 705. Um, it is September 17th, 2024. I'm going to call the Frontier Regional School Committee to order. This meeting is recorded. Um, the first thing on the agenda is reorganization. So could I get a nomination for chair? We have a first and a second. We see his chair. Any other nominations? Seeing none. Closing nominations. All willing to do it. Go ahead. I'm right. not yet. Yeah. I say you're willing to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All those in favor <laughs> of. I have a problem with saying no. Okay. We see being chair again. All those in favor. All right. And Bill at home. Yep. Hands up here. Thank you, sir. I hand the meeting to you. All right. Uh, next, I'll entertain motions for uh, nominations for vice chair. I nominate Olivia. Second. Thank you. Got a cheat sheet. All right. Any other nominations? All right. Oh, in favor of Olivia for vice chair. I should have just done it for my <laughs> All right. Thank you, Olivia, for serving as vice chair again this year. Uh, I ask you if you're willing, Chris. <laughs> All right. Uh, entertain uh, nominations for secretary. Anyone else want to? Vi for the <laughs> enticing <laughs> role of secretary. All, right. All in favor of Chris continuing to be secretary. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. All right. So we've got next the budget subcommittee. And I'll just kind of remind folks who were on it last year, if you don't already know, um, Bill, for Waitley, Mary for Deerfield, Keith for Sunderland, and Phil for Conway. And take nominations. I don't know if you guys want to do this town by town or as a one fell swoop. I think you appoint. You appoint. You oh, appoint this goes. is appointing. You appoint everything. Yes. Yeah, the rest of it. Is everybody good with continuing to serve on there? Is anybody interested in being a part of that group that isn't a part of that group? You gotta ask the old timer if he still wants to do it. Oh yeah, that's true. Bill, do you wanna continue to be on the budget subcommittee or you wanna see if somebody else from Waitley wants to hop in? I think he wants to. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 You guys are closer to <laughs> right. the <I> elf. <laughs> make sure I'm not not misinterpreting it we can't hear you guys very well that was a yes though. so yeah. all right so we've got the same members as last year with Bill Mary Keith and Phil representing their respective communities um, if I'm right from recalling our meeting it's the negotiation year yeah. so we've got a negotiation team from last year of Phil Joe who would need to be someone different from Sunderland and Bob and Olivia but for the folks who were on it last year who are still here okay. are you guys willing to continue yeah okay and from Sunderland paper rock scissors or <laughs> <laughs> Sunderland, Bob from Waitley, and Olivia from Deerfield. Thank you guys. 
Capital Improvement Committee, uh, Bob, Keith, Jared, and Damian. You guys are all happy to continue with your role in that. Anybody else interested in being a part of that crew? I'm good. Just keep things steady. And we need a new um, representative for the collaborative. There you go, you got David. Thank you. All right, we've got Keith doing the collaborative. He's Josh. Tell David. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll continue with the Mars uh, for the policy review committee. We had uh, Bob, Phil, Olivia, and Chris. You guys happy to continue in those roles? Sure. Yeah. And I would just kind of offer out there that even though these folks are in the appointed seats on, on this, you're welcome to join any of these committees as it expands your knowledge about what we do. Um, and Bob, you want to keep on the sick leave thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're actually huh? left. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Second Me, sorry. Yeah, I should have been clear on that. I think that takes care of reorganization. Um, I will do a a quick. This is only will only probably take a minute, but this came up in a meeting last year. A new business. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I think it's a good way to start each meeting to do kind of a review of our goals and so I just pulled our organizational goals from um, from our policy and just to kind of remind everybody as we start this year that the school committee's primary responsibility is to establish those purposes programs and procedures that will best produce the educational achievement needed by our students the committee's charged with accomplishing this while also being responsible for wise management of resources available to the school district. The committee must fulfill these responsibilities by functioning primarily as a legislative body to formulate and adopt policy by selecting an executive officer to implement policy and by evaluating the results. It must carry out its functions openly while seeking the comments of the public, students, and staff in its decision-making processes. I just think that helps to kind of focus us on what our role is here as we move forward in here. Our first order of business is uh, to review and approve the minutes from June 11th and August 13th. So moved. And all in favor of approving the minutes? Motion passes. And Move on to Shelley with the financial statements and warrants. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. That got like yeah. crazy Perfect. fixed. Okay, much great. Better. Uh, so I'm going to give you the warrant totals for July and August. There were 76 warrants uh, issued, paying bills totaling $7,937,428.96. Um, Bob, did you get in to sign those? I think you were in today. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, if you have our questions, feel free to swing by and just let me know. We can go over whatever we need to. A uh, couple of things before we get into the financial reports. Sorry, I'm home because I do not feel well and don't want to expose anyone, and that means the dogs are here. So, a um, couple of things before we go over the financial reports. So, one, the audit is in progress. Uh, we, I think, are going to have some findings on our report about school committee votes. Uh, there was some questions, particularly around clarity of funding for capital projects. So I won't be surprised if that comes up as something that we need to improve for this year. 
Um, and going back and looking over everything, I do see how there could be some confusion. Um, so we'll work on that. And then the other thing is our E&D estimate right now is looking to be slightly over the 5%. Um, much like we had last year for, for 25 uh, with our certification where we had to return funds. Sorry, I'm trying to not plug in my computer. Um, we had to return funds to the town through the budget process. So we'll do that again. If we are over, I'll let you guys know, you know as we continue through. We are really early this year getting the certification done. So I'm pleased about that. Our office has been able to move pretty quickly through the audit process. So I'll keep you updated. Um, the other thing I wanted to give you an update on quickly is the athletic trainer. So uh, we did sign that agreement with Mass General to try to hire an athletic trainer through them. We've not been able to secure for that position. Um, they claimed that there were zero applicants and all of those things that they put out. The new athletic director has had communication with them. But again, well, no inviting. Um, it seems to be an area issue. You know, many of us have reached out to different people that we know in the industry, and you know, there's other school districts looking as well. So it just seems to be something lacking in Western Mass. Um, we are back to our same process for hiring a trainer, primarily for the required events, but we're not having many of those services on site that we had intended to. So I suppose at least some room for discussion moving forward as to how we want to approach this and, and we can add it as an agenda item down the road, but it might be something that we want to consider that we actually add as a staffing position, um, just so that it might create greater interest. Um, it could be a turnoff for people to be a contractor with the hospital um, and only being guaranteed for a one year position. So we can continue that in the future. Any questions about that before I go on to the financial statements, either the audit or the trainer? Okay, um, so the financial statements, I wanted to go over a couple of account overages that I think are important for you to be aware of at this point. If you have other questions that I do not talk on, just let me know. Um, I'm going to move kind of quickly so we can bring it back around if, if you don't have nothing I'm pointing out. There are some natural overages in the budget. For example, the superintendent's line and his secretary line, that's a result sometimes of Excel rounding formulas and percentages. So the cost share for the super's position was um, supposed to be 0.63 and ended up hitting the budget at 0.60. Um, but that's where that little difference is coming from there. There's not actually an overage in his salary. It's just it lined up between the accounting system and Excel didn't match up exactly. Um, some other natural overages that happened, uh, we have a new copier lease, so our, our fees there are higher. We're paying a different pricing structure for our printing, so we'll be comparing the old system to the new as we go through this year, trying to make sure we have proper funding in the future. Lead fees under athletics are always something that are sort of up in the air. MIAA changed their rates based on participation. So that one should be randomly um, year to year as well. And then uh, another example is summer custodians. custodians. Um, so we bring in extra staff over the summer to help get all of that food we know the report from. And we ran I know about 3,000 this year. So those are some examples of sort of um, unknown things that I wasn't expecting to come up. Um, some other things to point out are the receptionist under the superintendent's office. There's about a $10,000 savings there. That's because we've been able to secure a grant to pick up part of that position. So that's some savings that will help offset some of those of their overages. Um, accounting software and professional fees are both also over. Uh, part of our audit, there's two components of the audit. There's one that actually looks at the government accounting standards. That's only done every other year, so we don't inflate the budget to cover that. When it comes up, we just let that line go over. Um, and accounting software, we're currently looking at each of the platforms that we have with our software to see if we can drop anything that we're not currently using. Um, it is a costly product. It is over budget at um, five schools. So we're just trying to look at ways that we can bring that cost down. 
Um, principal and assistant principal contracts were negotiated after the budget was approved, so those line items are going to maintain at overage throughout the year. Uh, and then the other big one that I wanted to point out, if you look under teacher salaries at the world language line, it shows an overage right now of I think about 46000 That'll come down because we have a retiree in that department. We did start this fall. I think the retire date is somewhere in October. So you have to load the system with the full salary and then as for pay and rate it properly. Um, so you'll see that number drop. So that's not truly an overage in the budget. A um, couple of things that we're watching are, are obviously always the health insurance line. Uh, rates did increase this year. I think we're going to be fine based on initial projections and after a moment has open enrollment finished up, we know who now is on the plan. So I'm just keeping a close eye on that and then we're always keeping a close eye on anything maintenance, custodial, or building related. I know that was a lot of information, so let me know if I missed something that you caught in the report or if you have any questions about any of that. Otherwise, Missy, I don't have anything further. Thanks, Shelly. I see we have one member of the public here. Thank you. And We've got a student over there that I cannot see your name. Um, Anna. Anna, thank you. You have a student council report? Yeah, can you hear me over right? We can, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm Anna Haskins, I'm a junior. I'm the vice president of student council alongside the delegate slash representative. Uh, first things first, the new cell phone policy there's a lot of pushback at first with students, but I see a lot more engagement in class now. Um, secondly, student council now expanded to incorporate um, class officers into student council, which is great because there's a lot more representation amongst grades in student council. Going on right now actually is the Pack the House for Aurora and all um, proceeds will be donated to Aurora and her family and if you can't contribute uh, we highly suggest the GoFundMe connected to it and lastly Spirit Week um, organized by student council is coming up October 7th through 11th and our themes will be announced shortly thank you thank you thank you the principal's report? Yeah, so I, I want to start off just by echoing what Anna's saying, just to let everybody know that they are having um, basically um, a pack the house for Aurora Penelio. So she's one, of, she's one of our students. She's facing very uh, dire uh, medical um, conditions. So um, if you're able to stop by after the meeting, um, it would be wonderful. So I just want to put that out there as well. Um, I do want to let you know about um, our new staff that we did hire, new teachers that we hired this year. We hired uh, Michelle DeSorber to work uh, as a special education teacher in our middle school. Uh, Nicole Dupree is our new school psychologist. I thought I could get away without redoing uh, my reading <laughs> classes, but no. Uh, Megan Lina is uh, a new high school special education teacher. Uh, Jessica Levy is going to be teaching uh, high school science and chemistry. And we've hired Glenn Sullivan, uh, who was used to be at uh, Sunderland Elementary School as our new AD, and he's also teaching uh, PE part-time. Um, our fall play is, in, is, is, uh, is underway. They're, um, they're already rehearsing the importance of being earnest. Uh, the performances are slated to take place the weekend of November 15th. Uh, just in terms of social and emotional learning, so we've relaunched our peer mentoring program this year. Uh, we've got a 10th grade, gr uh, a 10th grade boys group uh, which our assistant principal, uh, Mr. Dredge, is, is meeting with. Um, we are, are going to be having our middle school boys group shortly uh, as well. And we're, we're going to be, we just purchased a new uh, SEL curriculum for ninth and 10th grades called Changing Perspectives. So we're looking to roll that out within the next few weeks. Uh, and I wanted to officially recognize uh, two of our graduated seniors from last year. I received official notice from the college board um, that they have, that they did receive the AP Capstone Diploma and that would be Leah Gump and Julia Walkowitz. So just so you understand, so the AP Capstone Diploma, it's granted to students who earn scores of three or higher in 
in both AP seminar and AP research, and on, and on four additional AP exams of their choosing. So um, I want to officially congratulate them. Uh, and then I share with everybody our, our annual guidance report, which shows uh, gives you a, a pretty good rundown in terms of the schools that our students were accepted to, uh, the schools that our students uh, are going to. It's, it's, I think it's really interesting to look at it. Also in terms of historical data, you can see uh, over the years, I think the data goes back, goes back many years in terms of you know, how many students are actually in the workforce, in the college, or the service. Uh, and it's just interesting to see uh, how things have, have changed uh, uh, over the years. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, early release is happening. We're doing PD already, which is great. Um, and we've got open house happening next Thursday uh, at 6.30. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have lots of updates? What's that? You have lots of updates. Sure do. All right. Can't see it here. It's not on here and there. They changed it. Yeah. All right. Can see the social All right. So what I did is I I did the full district, and so we'll kind of go quickly through the elementary schools. But I think it's good for some of you. Those of you are also. Elementary we're actually going to get this twice, but um, it's good to see all the things that are going on in the district, some consistencies, and uh, what the schools are working on, and just the kind of workload that the central office is going to be um, So in each slide, I have what it is, what we paid, and what the funding source was, so you get an idea of how you know, different towns are funding different things. Um, they put a new video surveillance system in at Connelly Elementary. Um, you know, it's funded through a town warrant. They also put a new phone system in, running through town warrant, upgrading all the classroom phones, getting up to speed. Um, so, you know, stop me at a note quickly because it's not really improving, but um, if you want to get a question, feel free to jump in. Conley has finished um, AC in their entire building besides the gymnasium. So they got ahead of the other elementary schools. They were the first in, and they finished doing that today. So. Um, there's 17,000, that doesn't include the rebate that's coming back in school, so um, that's good news. Um, at Deerfield, you have to have a new entryway. Um, it's ready to show off your know, little celebration on Friday morning. Um, that came from three different funding sources, probably about a third each, each around $100,000 in a VP grant, town warrant, and school choice money coming from that. They, um, they got a good jump on their Mini split heat pumps, about two thirds of their classrooms are done. They have one more phase to go to get all their classrooms done. Now, they have a couple other larger rooms that aren't done. Their cafeterias are rather large, and their gymnasium isn't in the queue, but they can say they want to use town warrant and school choice on that. They have also updated their phone system. Again, they're seeing what kind of did. They, they were able to do a side entrance with some end of year money and some school choice money. This side entrance was a muddy mess and you know, not really trip hazard are dangerous to exit to this where the car loop is on that in case the building on the right hand side. They also have a video surveillance upgrade. Um, they use extra three money to fund that as well. Um, and so this is getting more greater outdoor coverage. They had been do some before, but not the coverage that They also did um, classroom flooring as well. As you know, we're in some of these elementary schools, we're doing like three classrooms a year, um, and they have nine more classrooms to go. And Frontier, so here is, we'll, we'll slow down a little bit so that we um, get you up to speed what's going on here. We did phase one of the roof replacement project. As you all know, those are the numbers up there of each stage of it. We ended up being you know, 461,000, 660. Um, and they were able to complete construction in early, early July. So they got that they got that done rather quick. They got in, they got out. Um, and according to our clerk of the works, we oversaw that job, which we added on later on at $8,000. I made that approval um, 
because there were so many measures done right. Our um, bill does not know that the platform is being appropriately put down. So this, uh, we had Edwards at all who's been giving us um, expertise for years, be on site every day to make sure they're doing the site properly. Things that they didn't do So we'll be, the capital meeting, the Frontier Capital meeting will be probably sometime in early October where we'll start talking about when we tap phase two. So here are some, just some things that fall out of the maintenance budget, but they're rather big chunks. We replaced the bleachers in the gymnasium. You'll see there's one set that's blue. Sorry, we couldn't get the matching color, um, but they were at the point where they've been hit by enough softballs and baseballs that they were breaking apart. The walking cooler finally got done. As you remember, you did that in FY23. Um, we were finally at the parts and um, able to do it during the summer. We couldn't do it last summer. Um, they couldn't squeeze it in during vacation, so they got it in the summer. So that was your town warrant in budget. Soffit painting, again, this is something that came in under, ended up being under budget. We had a budget around 13,000 for it because the equipment that's needed came in under 10,000, but you can see the before and after picture. It's just, again, it's deferred maintenance, as some townspeople would call it, but we don't have the equipment to do it, so we can have to save money aside to do that kind of size of a project for simple painting. Then we had, um, $8,000 of the tree removal, um, some of the big pines next to the fences, a lot of the pine, uh, trees near the, they were falling onto the track, and the track fences, and around the back parking lot, um, with deer falling on their cars. I just like to mention this because, again, these are, um, deer for the BTW did contribute 2000 toward it because um, it was indetermined where the town line was between the track and the school. And um, I think Chris, over at the deer for the BTW, generous that timeline and gives a few bucks. Uh, they did some Deerfield maintenance and some of ours, so we took, we got a little bit of a kickback there to make the Deerfield. Um, and it's just also just like tree maintenance, 8,000, it's just trimming nothing, it's not adding anything, it's just cutting down stuff to prevent damages. Um, all right, let's go through the other ones. Sutherland has started their municipal installation under town warrant and maintenance budget. It's got nine classrooms. They did electrical upgrades in order to get that. Uh, first they told Ben Barshevsky to send me photos of kids in it, and he put a kid in the closet. It's my kid. There you go. But, um, you know, all of our buildings are reaching an age where stuff like rot is happening around the sill of this building that was made of wood. And so they did this over five years, just kind of, you know, it's in order to keep on other capital projects, they, but they did this over five phases. Last year they couldn't get to it, our contract couldn't, so they did four and five this year, but it was funded over five years. Um, they also did a window project using ARPA money. Um, this, this one ended up being kind of a mess because asbestos was found on the windows after the project started. I had to go back to the town and ask for more ARPA money. The town was ready to work with us in order to get us another around $50,000 in order to beat the asbestos that was in the window lazy itself, so it wasn't exposed, but the public building, and there's, there's lots of that. And then Wheatley, they also got electrical upgrades on Town Warrant. They got mini pump um, in half of their building. They're going to shoot the other half next year using ARPA money. Um, they did some duct cleaning. They did a big part of their buildings with ducts, duct work using ARPA money. And they replaced some bathroom flooring from tile to an easier surface of the town warrant and then just these kids are darn cute so I put them in there but they did a an office floor as well and they did some exterior doors under town warrant um, that were running as well so oh and they had a huge problem with their fire suppression system over the summer we had to go to town ask for money um, because the fire system started leaking but that's what we've been busy with so they were able to get us left over our money before the deadline but anyway, so that was going across all the districts, a lot of different projects, a lot of different things I wanted to bid and such, so a lot of moving parts. Um, but um, any questions on Frontier stuff or anything over? What's that? Or did, yeah, you got a picture of the crane, you know, I guess like before and after pictures maybe. Um, we can do a field trip someday. You can see the white roof. 
final numbers show that the estimates were pretty right on, and that's important. Somebody ought to be congratulated for the skill estimating. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, we just had a little bit of um, add-ons with the roof project. wasn't much to be expected. They found a little bit more rotting, not rotting wet um, insulation. Because maybe they scanned to figure out how much. Uh, it was six months later, some some of those areas grew even so. When people ask, is it worth it? If we had growing in wet insulation, we did it. We got it, we got it in time. So, um, you know, as we approach the next phase, the roof, we'll talk about this as we talk about capital, but probably going to look at the scans again, see any areas that are the worst and go after that section next. But we have it kind of phased as we see it. Um, I'll explain all that later, but you know, that kind of. Anything else? Any questions? Okay, thanks. Keep going. Wanna, yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. So I we have the, to keep rolling. I thought you. So the, each year the, the handbook is approved by the school committee. I did send it to everybody. It's over 200 pages long. Um, and what you got a PDF version, I believe. The Word version online, everything's hyperlinked, so you can just go to the table of contents, click on it, and it takes you to the place you are. So as you got it, you've been like, wow, this is hard to go through. But it actually is more user friendly than. Um, the Word doc we had before where you can kind of click and just, and all the links as promised are in it so that you can travel. What I'm trying to do is get all the whole district to be under the majority of one handbook because when I started there were five separate handbooks that had to be updated every year, you know, from each elementary school and a lot of them were saying the same thing. So we really should be following the same practice in each elementary school, your frontier, so frontier uh, is a little different, you know, dealing with older age students, but um, that's why you're seeing the different handbooks um, where they're trying to keep the uh, each individual elementary school who's they have different procedures and stuff within their handbooks there, but stuff that's common through all they're trying we're trying to sink into one. So it's kind of a second. It's actually the second major step because we already did one last few years. We've been working on it with the elementary school. Now we're bringing the two together. We'll see how it works. So I'll, if you get any feedback from people, um, let me know if it's too much, um, too overwhelming. We can split them two apart, but we decided to keep them together to see how it, see how it worked. So, um, so you do need to vote to approve the handbook. Um, and it is already in motion. So um, if you have questions and concerns, we can try to answer them. And the biggest change student-wise, as George mentioned, is the cell phone policy. Um, George, just want to give an update for those who don't have kids complaining about it at home. <laughs> are your kids complaining about it? Mine are okay. Yeah, because okay I mean, honestly, so I mean, the update basically is that, you know, so the, the policy didn't change for middle school. So seventh and eighth grade is still, is still the same, which means that the students don't have, they don't have their cell phones all day for seventh and eighth grade. They put them in their lockers, they don't have, they're not even on them. So high school, the policy is different. Basically, all the teachers have uh, cell phone racks, kids come in, they put their cell phones into the rack uh, and, and to charge or to sit. Um, and if they leave the room during the, during the block to use the restroom or to do whatever, they don't take the phone with them. So the phone is there for the entire block. Uh, between classes, they can take their phones. They can have their phones at lunch as well. Uh, and, and so far, not good. Um, we've been, it's been, it's been, um, I would say, successful. Uh, we've had a one or two outliers who have decided that they need their phones a little bit or that they didn't want to put it in, but overall it's been, it's been successful. Teachers are saying that uh, the kids are more focused. Um, and so we're, it's, we're just gonna keep, we're gonna keep doing it. <laughs> so yeah. Thanks. Any question? That's probably the hottest topic within the I just want to say I really appreciate what Hannah said when she was giving her report mm -hmm. that um, she's noticed as a student mm -hmm. that other students are more engaged now. And I think that speaks a lot because as adults we can say what we want for the kids or want them to do, but she's noticing that. That speaks a lot. So that's great. Yeah, George, in terms of uh, like teachers, are they all supportive equally? I mean, you know. Yes. And that, that, was one of the, that was one of the concerns, I think, initially when they when it was brought to us initially, we thought it was maybe a, few, a handful of teachers, but I would say 98 or 99 percent of the teachers were like signed off on it. Like they, and so the teachers have been very supportive of it. The teachers have been, um, they've been um, 
enforcing it, and so that's that's really important because we couldn't do it without the teachers. Yeah, are, are teachers accountable to, to keeping up with it? Because like my father gave me an example from his school about going to some classrooms where some of the kids had phones and the teachers aren't doing anything about it. No, the teachers are enforcing no, the fact that the good students aren't having phones. We're not we're not finding that. So, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, not, no, like, I, awesome. I go to the classrooms a lot. And mm -hmm. There, the racks are always there. They're always in use. So. Nice. Do you think the system is perfect? I think the idea was the balance between responsibility and the kind of the lockdown mode with phones versus responsibility and balance. Um, so, you know, when you think about cell phones, it buzzes. It's not the buzz that's it drawing of attention. It's buzzing. It's the taking it out. It's the reading the message. It's the thinking about the message. The putting the phone back in. You lost the kid for two minutes to five minutes, depending on what the message said. You know, so limiting that alone is going to is going to help a great deal. Um, and I don't see kids in the hallway like once they enter the hallway, phones are up and going crazy either. Like they've been deprived. Um, I'm sure they're looking down and checking it, but nobody's texting them because they're wrong class. Yeah. <laughs> Their parents probably is who are texting them. <clears throat> And there's a lot of other stuff in there too. That's the highest, that's the biggest impact on day-to-day, -day, I would say day-to-day -day things. Um, in your handbook, everything that's written, um, you know, highlighted in the version I gave you is where edits were made, significant events were made, um, or at new things added. So as you went through, do you have any questions? And if you have any questions outside of me, you certainly can shoot me an email um, and, and such. Since the, there have been, since this edition has been it's been worked on, so some of the minor errors are starting to get cleaned up. Because we got it probably a week before school started, and we had to go in, and like there was some some things from material we gave them that was already out of date. So you know, there's going to be some. It's a live document, and it says that in the first in the preamble, so to speak. So we can make adjustments as the year goes on if there's errors. How does it get disseminated to students and parents? How do you hear? How does it get disseminated to students and parents? And I'm assuming it's just on school website, but how how is it making its way home? George, how's it getting to students? So how's it getting to, it's on the website. So basically we tell the students about the handbook. Uh, when we do orientation at the, at the beginning of the year, we let them know that they, that's where they can find it and they have to sign out for the fact that, that they understand that they can go to it and they can access it there. So they have to sign off on it? They have to sign off for the fact that Yes, that they know where to find the handbook. You probably should throw your next newsletter. No, no, no. Throw it in your next newsletter, too. Yeah, throw that in there, too. Because yeah, we probably should have sent that out, but then no, it's yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the new handbook revise. I'll second that. All well, in favor of approving the revised handbook? Motion passes, and you've got uh, policy yep, so uh, first read. So all uh, the policies are first read. So if you have questions, either you can ask them tonight or shoot me emails, or bring them up at the next meeting. Um, the first one, they're kind of uh, two different groupings. The first one is we had a short discussion regarding it during our policy subcommittee meeting. I found the language and put it together in that. Um, it's regarding homeschool students. Um, it currently says that they can participate in um, kind of read to, access to public school um, activities and other curricular and extracurricular um, upon approval from the superintendent, meaning that if you're a homeschool student, you can participate in the school play or in athletics or um, any other kind of the operative at school. Um, there is a motion, a movement rather, in many public schools that, to eliminate that. Um, there's, and, I, and I agree with that. Um, I think that we hold students at Frontier to a certain standard, um, both academically and all the things that we're asking people, our students to do as part of being part of extracurriculars, that we can't require 
people who are no longer, who are not part of our community day in and day out. Um, there's been some kind of talk about um, students who are homeschooled who, you know, you get back late at night from a game, they get to sleep in because they don't have to go to school and have the attendance requirement in order to go to practice. Um, you know, academic eligibility with their students at Wall Homeschool, you know, do uh, forms through me to make sure they're providing um, a standard of academic. There's no checks and balances on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, very, it's a very kind of open thing. Um, and they're just not held to the same standard. Also in here it says they can be awarded a Frontier Diploma. Um, again, I think you have to go to Frontier and take on Frontier Academics to receive a Frontier Diploma. So that's the major change in that first one. Um, you know, and, and again, think about that. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, either tonight or the next meeting. If I, I'll go into the other ones and then we can get them all together. The next one um, are a series of uh, non-discriminations on the basis of sex, non-discriminated um, non basis of gender identity, I just don't know what this is, but I mean, sex and sex based, uh, sexual and sex based harassment and retaliation, sorry, uh, non-discrimination on the basis of sex under Title IX, including sex based harassment. So these are all policies that have been changed under the new Title IX regulations that were released in August. Um, our administrative team was trained by an attorney, by our special ed attorney in July, June, I forget, but during the summer. Um, she came out and trained all of us under the new Title IX uh, to get us up to speed there. This is the recommendation from our attorney to change our policies. And if you go through, you can see what's in red and what's in blue. The one difference there is the um, second one. Excuse me. Um, Non-discrimination on the basis of gender identity came from our a &E group, our anti-racism and equity group. They worked on that um, late spring um, because they felt that really, while the policy guaranteed equal, you know, equal rights and non-discrimination within it, it didn't spell out, and it didn't have language that says you're accepted here. And um, this committee worked hard putting this together. It then ran it by the LGBTQ um, plus group in our school. So the students got, got to look at it as kind of an, an assignment to get their feedback. Their, they gave us feedback, their feedback that applied to the policy, I tried to put into, into this as well. Um, they also gave us some general feedback and some other things as well um, in regards to this. So this is coming from that group. So feel free to read through it. Um, as you'll see, it's, it has really supportive language in it. I think it's, it's, very, it's very positive. It's, and it says more than just we, you know, it says we see you more than just saying, you know, we recognize you. Right? Right. Look forward to it, but you know what I'm saying. Right. So again, these are all first reads. Anything legal, try to get to me prior to the meeting so I can run it by the attorney why they made certain changes, certain things. Because if you ask me a legal question on the spot, I may or may not be able to answer it, but you're going through it. Make sense? Thank you. I just want to clarify, many of our policy uh, recommendation changes come from MASC, but these are all in-house, basically. No. So MASC sent me a package, and then the Dupree Lie Agency, who's your, who you hire, modified their modifications and said, these are the ones we suggest for our districts. If you look at the two side by side, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. Um, but I went with the one we paid for legal advice for, and who we call should we get in line on and the only one that stands outside of that is the one that you got feedback from the other. Correct. And if you read it, you can see um, it, uh, right, it's AA, which basically means extension of ACA. ACAA means an extension to that one, where it really kind of spells out, um, you, know, uh, you know, how, we're, how, we're, how we recognize students, um, you know, different gender backgrounds. Different gender backgrounds. So first read tonight, and then next month we'll do a vote. That's correct. And we've got a presentation for the. I should divide things up. Yes. Yeah, I know. Sorry. So, so um, this is in the is a hyperlink within my school committee report. I don't know if you saw that, but so basically this time of year, 
I come up and I show you the strategic plan. This thing is going to get. Oh, I gotta, sorry, I got to present it. Before. So um, again, you can read through this um, as the cash uh, sent out. But basically, so the administrative team met during the summer, and part of what we do during the summer is look at our strategic plan and then start to build what we're going to be working on this year, modify it. Um, the current strategic plan was built as my entry plan, as I did through the uh, new superintendent induction program seven years ago. We then hit COVID. And we kind of put the capital, we put the, the capital, the uh, strategic plan. We worked on some things, but a lot of things we put on the back burner and then brought it back the last two years um, in bringing that forward. So, what we'd like to do this year is rebuild the strategic plan. While there's certainly areas when you look at a strategic plan that are, um, are static moving forward, like you know, we, are, we have direction we're moving with certain curriculum. There are directions we're moving with, you know, as George talked about tonight, with different um, things about behaviors and doing social emotional things. Um, we haven't gone out to seek input from the community to help build a strategic plan. And so that's what we want to do this year. And so when we build our school improvement plans, we'll build off the static things that we're, work we're already working on. Um, and, and, and then and at the same time while we're building a strategic plan. And for some reason, it's not scrolling down. Because you're in the B, you have to go to the other tab. What's that? You have to scroll from the other tab right now, you're in the meet tab. Hmm? Oh, from the other link you're saying? There you go. What's weird, in case you're wondering what's going on, the uh, Google, I mean, the, our Google platform doesn't allow me to log in anymore and be in two places at once, which is how we did everything last year. That's why everything's a little bit off. It's nice I didn't know it until I went to wait for an hour so, or two hours ago. So, okay. so basically, um, our timeline is um, in September, we're going to communicate this out to families that we're doing this, it's staff. In October, we are going to send out a survey to families and staff. Um, we're looking at different when I say we, right now it's Sarah, Laura, and myself putting this together. Um, but basically, looking at other, there's a lot of different models throughout the state that we're, we're stealing ideas from, borrowing, we'll give it back. And um, you ever send out a survey to family and staff, and then we're going to do a series of copies to, with some, some questions as follow-up to that at the different schools. After that, the team will then try to create a portion of student success. Okay, and also sometimes we get portraits of student success for the elementary and um, portraits of a graduate for a frontier. Basically, what do we want our existing students to be able to do? And what do we want them, you know, in looking at other strategic plans, they, they, you know, they look at a series of highly areas, sometimes five to six areas, where from being, you know, active and engaged citizens to, um, you know, the academic side of things to, Social emotional well being, those different kind of things. Um, you see. Um, and then the writing team between January and February will put a draft together. We'll then put it through a SWOT analysis, which basically is a, it's a system to kind of critically look at um, plans and read the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and such. And then we'll bring it back. We'll then bring the school councils and teachers and look for kind of finishing touching feedback and then we'll bring it back to school committee um, to look at get feedback and based on that feedback either it's ready to go or we take it back and we tune it up for the following school year that's kind of the timeline we did so when you look at strategic plans I mean if I was to self critique this already even though we're, we're fresh out of the gate what I'm trying to do is make something that's manageable with our size district some strategic plans really do um, they bring in outside consultants 
they bring in, there's lots of, I would say lots of fireworks around it in the sense of um, lots and lots and lots of meetings. And sometimes the process becomes bigger than the plan itself. I'm trying to look for a balance of getting constructive feedback that we can apply to a plan and getting a useful plan out within the same year. So, um, you know, it is, as I look at this plan, it is a draft, it's a draft and it's a guide to go forward. We can modify, change, take different ideas or if people have ideas about, um, you know, what we can add to it, um, that kind of thing. I think the general survey will give us some direction as well, where we may have to try to get um, more feedback from. So anyways, that is where I'd like to go with our strategic planning this year. Um, yeah. What's that? Who is on the leadership team? Laura, Sarah, and myself. Your two curriculum directors and myself. And we can, we will, do, so we also like, we talk about our strategic plan at our full administrative meeting, which includes our director of special education, um, all your principals and, and such. So this will be brought through them as well. But when I talk about the leadership team, who's really directing this, it's the three of us. Excellent question. I think we assumed we were trying to visit each community so that they could come, but it's the same feedback. So I'll drop that down. I think we, I would have no problem with anybody going to anything that they can make. Just have a question to tail off of that. Any hours that are outside of more typical working hours that might increase access for families that no <coughs> that's a good idea too to do an evening session maybe an evening session for anybody from all five groups making it online also increases accessibility yeah, yeah. that's what it's about. And I can give you guys updates as the year goes on too. If you're having about it, just sitting here now, that probably makes sense too. Any other questions about the strategic plan? All right, almost, almost done. Uh, moving on to uh, committee and chair reports. I don't know if anybody was meeting over the summer. I don't think there's any updated committee reports. We did have a professional development last week at the Sunderland Library, which was very well attended and really kind of a lovely mix of all the school committees and nice exchange of ideas and really thankful for Jessica and Carrie uh, Etchels for putting, putting that on. So thank you very much for for doing that, hopefully we can make that a regular routine because I think that was really helpful. Did you, uh, I should ask Jessica, did you send out all the information in that resource? Here to, I did, yes. she, Okay, I, did she send it out to everybody whether you were at the meeting <coughs> or not at the meeting? I believe she did, yes. Perfect, all right, so you guys should have, even if you weren't able to make it, you should have some access to a really wonderful compilation of resources that should help us all to be better in our roles at the school committee. So thank you again for sending those out. And we don't have a report from the collaborative, and you don't have anything else? That um, the only thing that was <laughs> else that was on my um, superintendent's um, report there was just, just I want to make sure you all folks know the ballot question number two. Um, I just want to make sure that, because you're going to be in conversations with people and being educational leaders, it's talking about removing, it's not talking about removing MCAS, which is a big misnomer in the community. It's talking about removing the graduation requirement of passing MCAS. Okay, so MCAS is not going away. 
there's no plan in, it, plan in the state for it to go away because we MCAS is required by the federal government. We have to have a assessment in order to receive federal funding and that is MCAS. If you're going to remove MCAS, they'd have to replace with something else and that would be a very expensive multi-year endeavor. So there'd be a lot more kind of things happening with that. So I just wanted you to know that as school community members, when people say, yeah, I don't like MCAS, we shouldn't be testing kids. We're still gonna be testing the kids. The question is whether or not it's a graduation requirement, okay? Um, and you know, statistically, it doesn't really affect Frontier. In the 17 years I've been here, we've had one student who um, was not able to pass the MCAS and there was other extenuating circumstances um, connected with that as well. So, um, so it doesn't really affect our district overall, but I'm not gonna give any more you know, the political of it, stay my line there, but um, that's usually as some of the masses to show. I just wanna make sure you guys know that as you're having elevator conversations, which are really short in Western Mass. Is the loan signs and the marketing behind the ballot question implies that we're doing away with it. Yeah. I believe that MASC's delegate assembly passed a resolution that basically points toward a yes vote on question two. Points what? MASC's delegate assembly passed a resolution that supports question two. Before it's question Supports two. the ending of testing two. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. And MASS is against it. Massachusetts Association of Secondary School Superintendents is against it. So <laughs> they, they believe that there, um, there should be an assessment um, in standard to graduate. Well, it's up to the voters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unless anyone has any pressing information that they want to get off their chest, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Anybody wants to go around? All in favor? <laughs> I got you. Okay. You can vote on the screen. Thank you. Me.